What's going on? Jake here with Uncommon ADC, and today I'm checking out the Benchmade Osborne 9400, which is an automatic version of their probably most iconic and most popular knife, the Benchmade Osborne 940. For the most part, these are going to be similar, but I'm going to be talking about the 9400. I'll talk about the differences, so if you're interested in the 940, just know it's about $63 cheaper at kind of retail prices if you get them on sale. Your mileage may vary there, obviously. But I'll talk about the differences. Spec-wise, it's almost exactly the same. It is slightly heavier at 2.8 ounces versus 2.65 on the 9400. But all of the rest are really differences in function because of that locking and deployment method or cosmetic weight saving type stuff. And so the 940 on the table is also a couple years older. So if it looks like it's a different shade, that's why it's had a lot of pocket time. And the show side's still in decent shape. The non-show side is a little bit more scuffed up and damaged, not too, too bad. It's held up really, really well for as much as I've carried this knife. But the other thing you notice right out the box is just how powdery the 9400 feels. And this one used to feel like that too. It definitely wears off over time and it still feels a little bit powdery, but side by side, it's really noticeable on the 9400. And so these run about 279. You can get them on sale. I got it for much cheaper than that. The other thing to note is since it's an automatic, a lot of retailers won't ship to you if you live in certain states, which I live in California. So it was just had an opportunity to get this at a really good price and had someone that would ship it to me. And so picked this up, super excited about it. Unfortunately, I can't carry it, but it's a fun one to kind of have at the desk and fidget with and use for opening packages and that sort of thing. So it will still get its use. But first thing that I'll talk about is the safety on here, which right now it is deployed. You can kind of see it here. The backspacer here is purple titanium, and if it's not touching that backspacer, that means the safety is deployed. And so if I press this button now, it will try to deploy, and you'll hear an audible click, but it won't actually disengage. And so you heard that click. Now the button is slightly pressed in. You can't press it again, and you want to push that back in before removing the safety. And I would imagine it blocks you from removing the safety until you push that back in, although I haven't actually tried that. So just to be safe, I always push it back in if I'm pulling it out of my pocket, making sure that that is safely seated before I remove the safety. And Again, you'll notice too, if you just pull it out of your pocket and you want to find out, you can press that button. And if it doesn't press, you know that it's tried to deploy and you need to push the blade back in. But once you push that back and it's touching that backspacer, you know that it is disengaged. And just while we're on the subject of the backspacer, I think this is really, really good looking. I love the color combo between that really deep, rich green and the bright, vibrant purple. I just think it meshes really well and looks really good. And out of the box, I'd say is probably the classiest looking bench made in their entire line, excluding maybe the gold class. But even that, this one's just so simple and sleek. And I don't know, for me, I really, really enjoy the looks of this one. So <laughs> anyways, I did disengage that safety. And so now we, when we press this, it will come flying out. It does really snap out. So you want to make sure you have a decent grip on it. I haven't dropped it, but I could imagine if you're not paying attention, have a half grip on this. It will fly out of your hand if, you, if you're not paying attention. So make sure you have a good grip on it. And when you press that, it's really going to snap into place and really, really snappy. I don't have a lot of autos, obviously, to compare it to since most places won't ship it to me. I do have the ProTec Runt, which feels very, very similar. But for the most part, I don't have a ton of experience with autos, but this one feels really good to me. And the other thing to keep in mind, which is different from a button lock, is that when you press that lock, so you're using that to deploy it, you use the same button to unlock the blade and close it, but you're gonna have some tension on the blade that you wouldn't have with a button lock, so you're not gonna be able to just press this and swing it back in like you would on a normal button lock. You actually have to apply some pressure and you'll feel a point where you kind of get past that tension and it just kind of snaps to the close position. But really along the entire way, you're gonna get some resistance that you wouldn't normally get. So I'm gonna deploy this and then talk about the differences between the two and then we'll talk about the specs which aside from the weight which again the 940 is 
2.8 ounces, the 9400 is 2.65 ounces, They're, the rest of the specs are going to be the same. But as far as differences go, the first one you'll notice is right on the blade, the thumb stud on the 940 is not present, present on the 9400, and that's a function thing, so you wouldn't be able to deploy it with a thumb stud, so no reason to include it. That makes for another cosmetic change as well, with the logo on both sides, the Benchmade over here, and the Osborne design on the back side, both pressed more up against the handle, but really just a cosmetic difference there. Going down the line, next thing you'll notice is the pivot. It's a little bit more substantial on the 9400. Obviously, there's more going on inside of here, so they went with a little bit different design, but really just kind of a superficial design there, or change there. Obviously, the locks are going to be different. You have the access lock on the 940 and the button lock on the 9400. Next up, you'll notice some screws that are also missing on the 9400. That's going to be on both sides, so four screws less total. But one of them's hidden by this pocket clip, but four screws less total. Probably adding a little bit of that weight savings, just kind of fractions of ounces here, but a little bit of weight savings there. You'll notice the liner has a little bit of kind of jimping and is more present here, where I don't know that there is even a liner. I haven't taken this apart yet on the 9400. I think there is not that I can see, but you'll notice that the liner has a little bit of extra jimping grip here that isn't present on the 9400 on the front or back. And then last difference is on the back side or front side depending on how you're holding it I guess the pocket clip and I don't know if that's a different from the model or just because I got these a couple years apart but this one has the old Benchmade deep carry pocket clip and this one has the unbranded pocket clip which is still a Benchmade pocket clip just doesn't have their name billboarded across the front of it and instead has that cut out but they're both deep carry reversible so right or left hand carry not super deep carry you're gonna have about a quarter of an inch exposed at the end but Pretty good pocket clips. I always like Benchmade's pocket clips. And really, really comfortable in the hands. Everything from here is going to be exactly the same that I talk about. The blade finish is obviously different. I have the satin finish on the 940 and the black finished blade on the 9400. But both options are available on both knives. So if you like one or the other, it doesn't matter which version you're getting. You'll be able to choose between the satin finish or the black finish. Both have an S30B blade with that reverse tonto and the swedge cut out here that really kind of iconic for the Osborne, really recognizable blade shape here. 3.4 inches on that blade and about 0.12 inches at the thickest point, although it thins out here at the swedge, thickens up a little bit and then thins out again at the tip. Handles 4.47 inches and really good size handles, feels good in the hand, comfortable shape to it, nice contouring all the way around so no sharp edges and I've always felt that it had a really comfortable handle. No jimping on the blade here so your thumb just kind of sits on the back side of the blade which is fine. And again no jimping along the top of the frame where you're kind of index grips on either side which there is on the 940. So 4.47 inch handle, it's relatively thin also at 0.41 inches. And I know I mentioned the weight at 2.65 ounces, but it's extremely light in the hand. So besides just kind of the stats of it, it's really, really light in the hand for both of them. And in the pocket, there's aluminum scales. You really don't feel them at all and just good in the hands. 7.87 inches overall length, so nice EDC size for me. And one the, on the original 940 I've carried quite a bit. One other thing I'll mention about the original 940 it's, is that it's probably responsible for the worst cut that I've ever had from a pocket knife. I was not paying attention. I was talking to my wife at the time and popping a zip tie off of something and just stabbed right into the palm of my hand. And so probably the entire tip here, more than a quarter inch, went into my hand. And there's a picture of it on my Instagram back in February, although this happened a couple years ago. I did post a picture back in February if you're interested in seeing what that looks like. It's not super gruesome. It's after I cleaned it up and got most of the blood off. I think there's some dry blood and just a nice size hole in my hand. But for the most part, not a super gruesome photo. If you're interested in checking it out, I'm not going to put it in the video because I don't want to get flagged by YouTube, but you can check it out there. Pocket clip is reversible, right or left hand carry, and no lanyard hole on here, so if you like lanyards on your knife, this one 
obviously doesn't have that option unfortunately but really really great design and a classic for a reason obviously they've been selling this knife for probably 20 plus years and have the mini Osborne as well now I'll probably pick that up at some point I'm not really in a rush to pick it up because I feel like this one's kind of a perfect size but if I do see it at a good enough deal I probably will pick it up but if you live somewhere where you can carry these automatic knives, it's definitely, I think, worthwhile. I'm obviously not an expert on automatic knives to compare them to. I can only really compare it to what I have, but it feels very comparable, extremely snappy, and just really great action on that. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification button. And I hope you have a great one. Take care.